Hey, I'm Daniel Norton. Welcome to my studio here in Manhattan. And today we're going to talk about using different focal lengths. I get this question a lot. People often want to compare different focal lengths. So what's good for this? What's a portrait lens? What's this lens? What's for landscapes? And the reality of it is that you're going to choose your lens almost always based on exactly the project you're working on. To take a lens, let's say a 200 millimeter lens and then a 50 millimeter lens and compare them really isn't fair because they're four different things usually. So today I've got my friend Zoe coming by. We're going to uh, shoot three different portraits, kind of in three different scenarios. And in each one, I'll use a different lens and to kind of talk to you about why I would use that lens for that scenario. So while there's never like a perfect lens for a perfect situation, I'm not going to tell you that. I mean, maybe somebody will tell you that, but they're wrong. Uh, there's kind of certain times where you might want to use a certain lens and there's reasons for it. So I'm going to go over the three lenses that we're going to work with today and kind of why I'm choosing them for the shots we're doing. So the first thing, which I already have on my camera, is 85 millimeters. So anywhere that's a bit of a longer lens, so like 85, 105, 150, those are, are typically uh, described as portrait lenses. And the reason for that is, when you're using a slightly longer lens, you need to stand a bit further back, which increases compression. So that's gonna make the background compressed nice uh, and close behind the person. Um, also, it's going to make like the, the nose a little bit shorter. It's gonna push the face. So it doesn't create this thing where like your, your ears are way back and your nose looks long that you, you can get with the wide angle lens. That's really primarily caused by the fact that you're standing really close. Um, if we're, if we're talking about just framing somebody up in a kind of the standard portrait setup, with an 85, you're going to be far enough back that you're not going to have those problems. So it's going to be, a lot of people would say, the most kind of flattering, 85, 105, something like that, a bit of a longer lens. When I'm shooting in the studio for kind of a classic, like three quarter type pose, again, the 85 is, could be fine for that, but I like to use a 50. The reason why I do that is because I want to get a bit more of the person in the shot. And if I stand roughly the same distance that I do with the 85, with the 50, I get more of them in the shot. This allows me to stay close enough where I'm not like yelling at the person. I, I you know we're close enough to have a conversation, which is how I generally like to view a portrait. Um, but I can still get decent compression because I'm not right up on top of them in order to get that framing. And I've got more of them in the shot. Then, which is kind of one of the reasons why I'm really inspired to make this video, is I wanted to with the wide angle lens because I think that's the thing, right? You, you see videos, you see people talk about wide angle portraits and they always do this really exaggerated, uh, you know, in your face portrait. but you don't have to do that. One reason to use a wide angle lens is to show the environment. So we're going to go into a small space and we're going to, again, we're going to stay back a bit so we don't get too much distortion. And we're going to get a, a nice kind of environmental portrait using a wide angle lens. This is the 15 millimeter for that versus a 50 versus the 85. All right, so let's just quickly talk about how we're going to like this. So the 85, I'm going to shoot outside. We have, it's a sunny day. We're just gonna get like a little bit of, we're gonna use the sunlight. Ideally, if we need to, I'm gonna bust out a little bit of reflector. I have this Lasolite uh, Halo reflector. I like this when, when I'm outside because it's, not, it's, it's stiffer than those pop-up ones, you know? You can really uh, hold it in the wind so it doesn't go all over the place. If I find the classic portrait, I'm gonna go with the classic portrait light. I'm gonna go with a two foot by three foot for a photo softbox. Uh, might use two lights for this and, and a reflector as well to kind of fill in. The, the second light I'm probably going to throw in the background like with a grid or something. I have the background set up behind me. And for our environmental portrait, I'm going to actually use a smaller box, a Shamira box. The reason why I'm going to use a small box for that is because I'm going to want to really create something that's a little more dramatic and I'm going to put it in nice and close to her and kind of, uh, kind of pop her out of the space. Because if you've got somebody in a wide shot, Right, you, if you light them completely flat, sometimes they'll blend into it. This is gonna give us a little bit of contrast and gonna make her pop right out. Okay, so Zoe's got a whole bunch of stuff that we're gonna uh, photograph today. Well, we're gonna photograph Zoe, but she's gonna be wearing stuff. <laughs> we're not just photographing the stuff. So you have a stripey, yeah. and I am in favor of stripies. Also this warm tone, it, you know, you've got some warms and some of the warm uh, whites and kind of the tans is going to be really nice for outside because the buildings are that color. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. She knew that. She was like, I know what color the buildings are. Okay. So she brought the clothes to match. <laughs> so we're just, it's going to be abstracted, right? Because we're going to compress the background. So we're just going to really go out there and just use the natural light. I might use a little bit of reflector if we need it. But otherwise, we're just going to come in nice and close. Nice shot. Again, I'm not going to stand out there and shoot this outfit with all the other lenses because I know this is the right lens for this. This is what this is all about. So we'll go out there, shoot some of those, and we'll come back in. 
I'm gonna shoot with the 85 millimeter lens outside. And the reason for that is because we're doing a relatively tight portrait, right? And I want to, if you're, the closer you get to somebody, the more likely you're gonna have that distortion, right? With like the nose pulling forward and the ears pulling back. So to be able to stand a little bit further back is gonna be to my benefit. Now I could use the longer lens at 100, at 150, at 200, but the longer the lens I use, the further back I'll have to stand. And clearly I'm out uh, on a balcony with, I don't have a lot of space and it's noisy, right? I don't, I, so I wanna be close enough to her that we can communicate and I can get into the little areas I need to get to frame her up right, but also far enough away that we don't get any distortion. So for this, we're just shooting natural light and it's a cloudy day, which kind of works to our advantage. That being said, the sun is still coming from one direction and it's changing. So I'm gonna always be concentrating on getting her positioned so that uh, the light will be in a, a spot that's still flattering. I've got light bouncing off the, the building to kind of fill in, but for some of these shots, I'm gonna use a reflector as well when I really wanna kick a little bit more light into her eyes. Now, of course, the wind is crazy out here and we're just kind of going with it and having fun. That's one of the issues when you're outside, right? You just have to deal with it. And being able to, again, being close enough to her with the 85 that we can quickly talk and move around is super beneficial to me. If I had set up a 200 millimeter lens and I was really far away, it'd be hard for me to kind of keep doing these different positions so we can get this, uh, the wind correct. Okay, that was super fun. We got some nice, clean, fun shots. So really all you need to get great headshots is a beautiful subject and a Manhattan studio on the 12th floor. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> no, but nice, nice natural light shots. And the thing is, again, you could shoot that kind of stuff with a lot of different lenses, but for that framing, I think the 85 is really nice. Now we're gonna do something with more three quarter and we're gonna go with uh, maybe that, this nice green sweater, a little texture, we'll shoot it against the gray background, kind of, uh, kind of classic portrait. Okay, so this is kind of a, a pretty standard setup for me. I like using a 50 millimeter lens for kind of the in-studio type portraits, the three quarters. I think it's a good focal length to catch what I want and not be too far away from the subject. I like to be in close. Maybe it's because I've had a lot of small studios, who knows, but this way I don't have to yell and we're right here, we can communicate. Um, you know, I'm not like across the room, but I can still capture basically from just below where, where if her fingers dangle, they're cut off a little bit, but you know, she'll do the, you know, the, you know, the stuff that models do. <laughs> you see it, she'll be like, work it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and this will get us a nice framing so we can kind of work the, the camera a little bit more space around. But let me just quickly show you the lighting. Again, two by three softbox in a B1X. That's kind of classic softbox. People come to me all the time, they're like, Daniel, that's my name. And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, what softbox should I get? This is kind of the softbox, right? The two by three is like your standard portrait softbox. If you're looking for a softbox, that's a good one to start with. I'm just using the one light. It's gonna scoot past and it's going to bounce off this V flat over here, which is just basically a white board to fill in a little bit on our shadow side. And then to make the background get a little light on it, I have a light in the back here. That's a Profoto B1X with a grid on it. So it's giving us kind of a circle of light. So first I'll show you the finish shot, then I'll show you each light separately. All right, so here we go. This is it, boom, that's, that's the finished shot. That is the finished shot. Yeah, perfect. I'm just in TTL, guys. I have the background light turned two stops under what it thinks is the correct exposure. She looks great. Background has a little separation, looks nice. Just to show you, I'm gonna turn off the individual lights. If we turn off the background light, we'll get this. A little more drama, right, if you like that. And then, of course, if you just wanna see the background light, just to kinda of line it up or whatever, you can fire that one independently as well. And that'll give us the, you know, that you can see what it's doing back there, it's just subtle. And again, we can control that as we want. So let's turn that guy back on and let's take a handful of shots here. Now what's nice about the 50 and the framing here is that I can start like this, but then I don't have to like be staring through the camera because I know I have enough room around her. And it's kind of what I want here. Cool photographers don't look through the camera. Let's do that. I can look over here. I could be drinking coffee. I could be over there. You know, it doesn't matter. She's still doing stuff there. Good like that. A couple more. Good like that. Nice. Nice and clean. Nice and simple. Portrait shot. You do this all day long. You could do it all day long, right? I mean, but if you have to do like corporate portraits, let's say this is a great setup. Just nice and simple. 50 millimeter, 50 millimeter lens. So you're close enough to them so you can converse, but you're not right up in their face and you're not so far away that you're just like, move to the left, to the left. That, that could be a song. 
Anyways, let's move on to the next shot. Okay, so Zoe's changed into this like darker, cooler outfit because there's nothing cooler than hanging out in the office. <laughs> but here we are. Uh, and, and again, this is not doing that fun house in your face thing with the 15 millimeter. What we're gonna do is use it to get more, get more in the shot, right? We wanna show an environmental portrait. We do need to be wary though that if I, you know, if she just sits down on the couch and then sits back, her legs are gonna be really big because they're closer to the camera, right? You, you, you're reducing your compression with the, with the, because you're so close, right? So we need to make sure that, you know, if you're gonna shoot something with like this, that she stays kind of forward to her legs. Or if you wanted her back further, she could like cross her legs and prove further back. You just wanna keep your plane uh, more narrow when we're doing this. So we've got it set up. I'm just using this small stop box here to kind of cut her out. You can see there's a lot of light in the space, but if I were to turn off the flash, I'm shooting at a uh, hundredth of a second, uh, 100 ISO, uh, F4. We can see that all we're really gonna see is that kind of practical light in the corner. I wanted to make sure that exposed for me so you know it's part of the shot. So we'll turn the flash on. Again, just using TTL. Now what I'm gonna do here is, sometimes it's hard to focus a wide angle lens because like everything kind of seems in focus. So I'm gonna actually use the back screen and I'm gonna punch in. And then I'm gonna put my glasses up on my forehead because I'm old. <laughs> we got it there, I'll focus it and we're good. Again, we're shooting at F4 to kind of be like the other shots, right? Um, we've always been at F4, here we go. So I wanna give you guys a good idea. Yeah, there we go. So that's pretty good, except right, we have that very uh, high light. So we're getting a lot of shadow coming down. So that's easy enough to fix with a little reflector. You know, when using a reflector, you need to make sure that obviously it catches the light. And because of the angle of my light, this should do it. I'm gonna use silver because of the distance and I'm just gonna obviously make sure it's not in my shot. So it's not in the shot. Check my focus, here we go. Little fill light and there we go, right? Nice and simple. Yeah, you can see here how the silver fills in, right? We've got um, no reflector with reflector. So because we want this to be a little more glamorous, I like that, that look better. So we're gonna keep that and let's just shoot a few, nice and simple. You can see how she just cut out. This is the power of flash, guys. You know, we can really control our environment with it. Getting exactly what we want in the shot. And again, even with the wide angle lens, she's not really distorted. Now let's just do something distorted just to do it. Go ahead and lean back. Although obviously the exposure is not gonna be good here, but I just wanna show you guys. You can see, right, how her legs look so big. That's not what we want, right? What we wanna do is keep it so that everything's on one level and that way everything is not distorted. Like that. You know, you can even like put a hand close to the camera. Would you like a, like a 1980s rap video? Okay. Yeah, like exactly. Like she's pointing at me. And we can see that we can use that for effect as well, right? It gets really distorted and long. You know, that's not what we're doing. You don't, you can do that. And, and a lot of times when people think wide angle lens, they're thinking, oh, that's what it does. That's only if you want to do that. You can get a nice clean shot like this with the wide angle lens. And yeah, and, and the reason for using it here is because any, well, I have a little bit more space behind me, but really there's not a lot of space here, right? I couldn't put an 85 here and shoot her. It wouldn't work, you know, I wouldn't get this shot. So shoot a couple more. I'm just gonna check my focus again since we moved around. I'm just gonna punch in again. This is a manual focus lens. A couple more like that. Nice. Good. Nice, perfect. Yeah, this is very cool, guys. So this lens right here, this is a Nisei lens. It's a 15 millimeter F4. Pretty inexpensive manual focus lens. You know, I originally got it to throw on my camera to shoot some wide angle for video, but these kind of lenses are great and very affordable. Um, you can get them in all different mounts. So don't be afraid to ex experiment. You know, if you know you love super wides, then you can get, you know, all kinds of autofocus stuff or whatever. But with a wide angle lens, it's nice and easy to use a manual lens like this and very affordable. Okay, so we got three looks, right? Not bad. So this is always the moment of truth where Zoe has to look at them and then she has to be like, Daniel, you should give it up, give it up. Give it up, kid. <laughs> now, so let's take a peek. So you can just kind of flip through just to get an idea. Because the idea here would be, so yeah, just push up on you. you know, you're gonna to wanna to look at them with your subject because maybe they'll see something they wanna shoot more of or maybe they didn't get something they wanted or maybe they got it and they feel happy and they're just like, yeah. Yeah, you're on there. It looks really like it looks very good. Like you've been working out. Oh, thank yeah. you. There's another one. Uh, She's like, wow. This one like a lot. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, I, I think I like the wide angle shot as my favorite shot of the day so far. Yeah, I mean the the, the uh, yeah that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> they look great. 
Yeah, nice and simple, right? Yeah, yeah and the, and before this, right, we had these ones, which were, which were just like, you know, it's so funny. And this is the this is the, the thing, guys. You never start with a shot like this, because like this is now we're looking at this and it's like, oh yeah, that's fine. But this would have been fine before. This is a good corporate LinkedIn, you know, yeah. clean. It's simple. You know. Yeah, it's always good to have shots like that. Mm -hmm. Nice and simple. He's like, yes, I'm standing in front of the right background. <laughs> Here I am. You know, that, that was just some lights. All right. Oh, and then we are outside. Gonna be lots of blinks because of the wind, but lots of fun, beautiful light. Your eyes just really explode outside too because it's good, you know. <laughs> That's always a good one. <laughs> Doing our best. There you go. You know, and the, the reason, I mean, maybe that'll be a great shot or not, but I try to shoot through the wind because you never know what you're going to get. Sometimes you get a really fun shot with the, with the lights everywhere. So these are always fun and we can see how the background's really compressed in here, how close that building feels to you. Yeah. So yeah, these will be, uh, these will be fun to go through. And go through really. <laughs> but yeah, really fun. So I'm pretty excited. What do you think? Yeah, they look great. She's like, oh my God, you put me out here. <laughs> By the way, guys, this is a good this is a good lesson for you too. Everybody always wants like a wind machine or something. Wind is the devil. <laughs> like sometimes it's look, there it is. That's what I think about wind. No. But like it can be great. I mean if you nail it, right? It's it can be good, but it's tricky to work with. But uh, I think we got some fun stuff anyways. And uh, yeah, super good. Thank you so much. Welcome, thank you. Alright, so guys, there you go. We shot these lenses. Now, I know somebody's going to say in the comments, it would have been good if you shot all three things with one lens or with all the three lenses on each look, but that's not the point here, right? The point is that this is what you use these lenses for. If I if I go out there and I show you this shot with the wide angle lens, like crap like this, you'll look really disordered. It won't look good. Then you'll be like, yeah, the 85 is better. It's not better. It's good for this situation. Whereas this last one, we could never have done with the 85 because we don't have enough space. You know, so it really comes down to whatever you're trying to achieve, you're going to choose the lens that's going to work for you to achieve that. Of course, if you're going with your eyes closed, you know I was going to do that. You're like, why didn't you pick that one first? All right, so there. Yeah, I just had to. So we'll go like that. And there we go, right? Three different looks, three different feels, all kind of, I stood mostly, you know, as much as possible, mostly the same distance from her in each one to kind of get that part the same. I shot still at F4 at each one and you see how each one changes. Okay, great guys. I will put Zoe's information in the description so you guys can follow her. Be sure to follow me, Daniel Norton Photographer, and I'll see you next time on set. Thank you all so much for watching. If you wanna see more videos like this, you can click on one of these to watch more. And if you like the video, make sure you give it a like, subscribe to Adorama TV, and hit that bell so you never miss a notification and you can never miss a video.